Seva and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be making chocolate chip banana bars. But before we get into the video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss another one of my videos. Alright, let's get started. This recipe is so simple, but it's delicious. It's even better than banana bread. It's a great option for breakfast, lunch, snack, or even a dessert. They're delicious and super filling, so everybody's going to love them. They're also freezer friendly, so you can go ahead and make a whole sheet and just eat what you want right then and there, and then you can just cut up the rest in little squares and put them in a Ziploc bag and right in the freezer for two to three months. Now for this recipe, you're gonna need some ripe bananas, some sugar, milk, eggs, some chocolate chips, some coconut oil, baking soda, and cinnamon. Now I do have some ingredient variations or alternatives. So I use brown sugar instead of normal white granulated sugar because I get that same sweetness but just with less sugar. Now that being said, you can reduce this to half of a cup instead of three-fourths cup, but just make sure your bananas are super ripe. Now you can replace the oil, half of it or all of it, with applesauce. I've definitely tried this before and it's really good. Now you can also use a different milk instead of normal cow's milk. You can use almond milk, you can use cashew milk, whatever it is that you want. And you can also add a couple of tablespoons of flaxseed if you want, just to add some more fiber. No one's even going to notice. Now, if you don't have ripe bananas, don't worry. I have a couple tips for you to make your bananas ripe in no time. You're definitely going to want ripe bananas if you're making any sort of baked good. It's just going to be a stronger, more pronounced flavor, and it's going to be very sweet. So the quicker way to do this is by putting your bananas in the oven. So what you're going to want to do is take your bananas, skin and all, and put them on a baking sheet at about 350 degrees. Now you are going to want to use parchment paper for this and cook them for about 30 to 40 minutes until they're dark and really shiny. Then you're just going to want the bananas to cool for about an hour and then you can proceed with your recipe. Now don't worry if they're black, that's completely normal. Now if you have a little bit more time, what I recommend you do is Take your bananas and put them in a brown paper bag with an apple and just close that up and let that sit for about a day and then you'll see that they definitely will ripen up some. So the first thing you're going to want to do here is preheat your oven to 350 degrees and get your pan nice and ready. So a lot of people like to use the pan, that's no problem. I like to use butter just because it's never failed me and nothing ever sticks when I do that. So we have our pan ready, I'm just going to set this aside and our oven is on, it's getting ready to preheat. So the first thing we want to do is start off with our bananas. So you're just going to want to peel them and mash them really good. Now for this part you can use a potato masher, you can use a fork, you can use a spatula, you can use a whisk, anything you want. Now like I always say, this recipe is totally customizable, so if you like your banana, banana to be just a little bit chunky or completely smooth, you can do that yourself. If you don't like chocolate chips, if you do, if you want to add nuts, you can really do whatever you want. Now I don't like my bananas to be completely smooth, I do like them a little bit on the chunkier side. Now you can also use frozen bananas, but do keep in mind that you want to defrost your bananas, um, not all the way, maybe about halfway, and then you want to take them out of the peel and let them thaw out completely in a bowl, and then you're going to want to drain all of that liquid that comes out of the banana before you use them. Now what we're going to do next is add in our brown sugar, add in our coconut oil or applesauce, whatever it is you decide to use, vegetable oil, your milk, almond, cow's milk, doesn't matter, and your two eggs. Ha, got it. No one wants to eat eggshell. Okay, so now we're shell free and we're just going to mix this on all together. Okay, so next you're gonna to wanna to add in your dry ingredients. So that's gonna be your baking soda and your cinnamon. And then this recipe is optional, but it does call for a cup of chocolate chips. So this is where you're gonna add in half of a cup. And then we're gonna sprinkle the other half on top. 
We're preheated. So I'm just going to toss this in. You're just going to want to do this till everything's well mixed. You don't want to over mix anything. Okay, so now we're ready to put it in our pan. Then you're just going to want to take the other half and spread it around on top. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in the oven for about 18 to 22 minutes and then we're going to take it out, use our toothpick test and taste them. You guys wouldn't believe what I just did. I'm sitting here thinking about how I told you guys, don't have to worry about the gluten. You're supposed to put flour in this. Yeah, one and three fourths cup. But this is real. So I'm just going to add that in. Thank God I just caught that. And then we're just going to put this right back in the oven. That's more like the consistency that we want. <laughs> the pan is actually not even hot. But um, see, the only difference now is just going to be this is a blended mixture of chocolate. And okay, I'll take it. But now, still, just for aesthetics, I'm going to have to put some more chocolate chips on top. Now let's try this again. Let's do a nice 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so now it's time to check on them. So we did the toothpick test and it came out clean. So now, this is so hard, but now we have to just wait for this to cool before I cut into it. it smells so, so good. I'm almost kind of happy that I made that little mess up before because now you have like the chocolate inside all spread around. It's not just little chunks here and there, it's just well blended throughout. And then you have on top the chocolate chips that are just gonna be melted right when you bite into them. Okay, so I'm being impatient, and I want to try some. So, just cut a little piece. Hopefully it doesn't just crumble on me. Looks so good. Mmm. So, so good, you guys. Now, do keep in mind, this is going to solidify a little bit if you let it cool down. But, you know, I can't do that because it just smells too good. <laughs> it's so, so delicious. You guys are going to love it. It's definitely different than banana bread. But you, of course, are going to still get that cinnamon, sweet, banana, chocolate chip flavor. And it's just to die for. Well, that's all I have for this video today, you guys. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss another one of my videos. Now, don't make the same mistake that I did and completely forget the flour. I mean, we're all real here. If I'm not authentic with you guys, then I don't know who else is going to be. But don't make that mistake. <laughs> I definitely will make sure to link the recipe down below in the description box so you can just follow that along. But please let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you made it this far, comment an emoji of the shocked face because, you know, I totally forgot, I don't know, a main ingredient in a baked dish such as this. <laughs> Well, as always, you guys, if you want to get my exclusive nutrition tips, healthy food recommendations, and delicious recipes just like this one, this one, this one, then make sure to head over to the description box, click the link, and join the fam. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.